Hey guys, my name's Cal. Today we're going to be creating a very simple settings page in Android Studio using Java. Our settings page is just going to allow the user to switch between a dark theme and a light theme. We're just going to store that simple bit of information, whether or not the user was last in a dark theme or a light theme in shared preferences. Shared preferences is a really great way to store a small amount of data that you want to be persistent rather than creating a whole SQLite database to store a whole entity and a whole bunch of stuff. If you've got one or two little things you need to save, then shared preferences is a great place to put them. Cool, so creating a new Android Studio project, empty activity. I'm gonna call this one shared preferences tutorial. Our programming language is Java and just hit finish. We're gonna start with the layout first. We're just gonna to continue to use the parent constraint layout. We're gonna give it an ID of parent view, as well as giving our text view an ID of title text view. We're gonna set the vertical bias to 0.1, just so that that text view sits a little bit higher in the view. We're gonna change the text to settings, as well as making the text all caps equal to true, text color to black, as well as making the text a little bigger, so 30 SP. Then I'm gonna copy and paste down that text view, and we just wanna have it sit just below our other text view, renaming the ID to theme text view, and getting rid of the vertical bias, as well as the top to bottom of, and then just gonna drag and click to the bottom of. So that's giving us our top to bottom of our title text view, and then just giving it the margin top to 30. We're gonna rename the text to light. And then next, what we're gonna add in is a switch. I'm gonna use the material switch, but you could really use any of the switches with height wrap content, as well as giving it top to bottom of our theme text view. And then we're just gonna set it in the middle. So copy and pasting the left of and right of parent. We're gonna give our switch an ID. So just calling it theme switch. And that wraps up our layout. So what we're gonna do next is create a new Java class. I'm calling this one user settings. We're gonna make that class public as well. Our user settings is going to extend application. And then we're just gonna declare a couple of strings. So the first one I'm calling is public static final string preferences. And I'm just naming it preferences. And then I'm gonna hit control or command D just to duplicate that line. And then I'm gonna rename the string to custom theme, our light theme and our dark theme. So our custom theme is gonna be our key. And then our two sort of values are gonna be our light theme and our dark theme. And you may have noticed that I've declared those string variables in all caps. It's just good practice to know that the string is static static and final, as in it will never change, rather than just declaring it as in the camel case. If you're consistent, you can just know at a glance whether or not the string can be changed or not. Next, I'm gonna declare a private string, calling it custom theme. We're just gonna right click and generate a getter and setter for our custom theme. And then we're gonna head into the Android manifest, and we just need to say Android application name and just giving it our user settings. So now we can head into our main activity, Java class, and we're just gonna declare a couple of the views. So I've just created a private view, calling it parent view, as well as our switch material, calling it theme switch, and then our two text views, so our theme text view and our title text view. We're going to create a function calling it init widgets, and we're just going to find all of those views by their ID. So I've just started the first one there, theme text view, find its view by ID. Cool, so now that we've got all our views connected, I'm just going to create another variable calling it user settings, which is of our user settings class that we just created. And above our init widgets, I'm just going to say settings is equal to get application, and just casting it to our user settings class. Below our init widgets, we're going to create another two functions. The first one's called load shared preferences, and the next one are called init switch listener. So in the first one, we just wanna load um, any shared preferences or any user settings if they exist. Otherwise, we're just gonna load a default. Shared preferences is equal to get shared preferences. We're gonna give it our user settings dot preferences string as well as mode private. Next, we're gonna declare a string calling it theme. And we're just gonna say shared preferences dot get string. We're gonna give it our user settings dot custom theme. And then the second value there is our default. If there's no value stored in our custom theme, we're just gonna use the light theme. And then we're just gonna say settings dot set custom theme with our theme. Cool, so next inside our init switch listener, we're just gonna say theme switch dot set on check change listener, which is of a new on check change listener. And then we're just gonna auto complete the override function. On our on check change function, we're just gonna change this boolean to check, and then just say if switch is checked, then we wanna set our user settings to our dark theme. Otherwise, we wanna set the theme to our light theme. And then we're just gonna create a shared preferences editor. So just calling that editor. And we're just gonna say is equal to our get shared preferences. So we're gonna use the same preferences string. So our user settings preferences, as well as our mode private. And then we're just gonna say editor.put string. But you can see that there's lots of options here. You don't actually have to use strings. You could use a boolean or a long or an int. And then we're just gonna say, yeah, so editor put string, giving our custom theme as well as our settings.get custom theme. And then we're just gonna say editor apply. As well, I needed to just add to our editor.edit. So next we wanna create one more function. I'm gonna call it update view. And we're gonna call that from both our load share preferences as well as whenever the switch is changed. And we're just gonna declare a couple of colors. So the first one I'm calling black. So it's just a final int is equal to context compat get color giving a context of this and our color is r 
color black. We're just going to duplicate that line and just change it to white. And then we're going to say if our settings custom theme equals our user settings dark theme, the, otherwise our theme will be our light theme. We're just going to say title text view. We're going to set the text color to white. We're going to set the theme text view text color to white as well as the text. We're going to change the text to dark. Our parent view, we're going to set the background color to black and our theme switch, we're just gonna set it checked to true. And then we're just gonna copy and paste down all of those and just making them the opposite. Cool, and if we build and run this now, you can see we can, when we hit the switch, it turns into a dark theme and we can close off the app. And when we reopen it, it's remembered that the user had selected the dark theme and therefore set our view to look like the dark theme appropriately. And same if we change it back to the light theme, it's remembered that a user selected the light theme. So there you have it, a very basic how to save settings in Android Studio tutorial. Shared preferences is a great place to store a small amount of data that you want to be persistent. Really great for something like a settings page. I hope you found some use in this tutorial and I'll catch you guys in the next one.